Hello everybody, Justin from Lucky 8 Off-Road and today I'm going to show you how to install our CFE bumper on this 2015 LR4. If you have a LR3, it's going to be the same process to install the CFE bumper. And if you are lucky enough to have one of our Proud Rhino bumpers, the installation process is almost going to be identical, except for you won't have to bolt up the wings or the hoop. So I'm going to get to work. You go get yourself a beer and uh, we'll meet back here in a minute. First thing you're going to want to do is get the headlights out, the grill out, and then the fender flares need to be loosened up. You don't have to pull them all the way off, but if you want to, you can. There's a bolt right here you have to be super careful of. Uh, I'm going to get the headlights out and then I'll show you where that little bolt is. Okay, right here, and I'm going to bring the camera in, but I'm letting you see it, is a tiny little screw and that's holding the fender flare on. You're going to be able to wiggle this loose and get the quick clips to snap off. And then what everybody does, me included, is just keep yanking it and then you crack the mount or rip the fender flare. So headlights out, you'll be able to see it. I'll bring the camera in and don't forget that screw right there. So hard to see. That's the screw. Want to get that out next. Next up, I'm gonna pop the tire off and I'm gonna get the inner fender lining pulled back. It's held on with a couple of those little pop clips and some Phillips screws. You want that out of your way so it's easy to release the tab that holds the lower flare on. We're gonna work the flare off. And I said, you don't have to take it off, but I highly recommend you do. And then it's held on over here with two little uh, plastic clippies. Hyperspeed. Right here are two plastic Phillips head screws. You do not have to take those off. You can leave them in there. That's what's holding your TPMS sensor sensor. There you go, that makes sense. TPMS sensor sensor. The other thing we wanna do is get a bunch of these little pops out. And if you don't have one of these tools, you should, I use it every day. We got, let's see, one here, one there. And then let's spin the light around. There's one on the fender flare and then another on the fender flare. You're gonna wanna get those off. Okay, here's a, another little tip. This, you can see it there, you go. this little tab slides in the bumper right there. So what I did is I pulled the fender out of the way, the inner liner, and I pushed up on this plastic piece to get it to pop out. And then once I did that, all the clips came loose. There's the screw that we took out or else we'd snap the flare, popped them all out. Got the two mounts for the inner plastic clippies. This fender flare is off. Time to move to the next step. Next up, we're gonna wanna get the bumper cover off. There's some uh, T27 Torx here on the side and on the bottom. There's a ton of wiring and everything behind it. So I'm gonna loosen this up, wiggle it forward, and then work on disconnecting all the electronics. With all the Torx, and by the way, they're T30, not T27 on this car. With all the Torx loose, on the sides and the bottom. You have to pull out the bolts on the top of the bumper. On this particular four, they are eight mil. I really can't remember what the LR3s are, but it's the same concept. Get the torques off the side, get the bolts off the top. Then we're gonna gently wiggle the bumper forward. There is a wiring harness on the right-hand side. I'm gonna disconnect that. 
but I'm also going to have to deal with the washer bottle squirts. So I'm going to pull those out and uh, basically struggle with the bumper by myself. If you have a friend, this is when you want them to help you get this cover off. I'll get to work. With the bumper cover off, you're going to want to get the front valve block loose. We're going to just let that hang. You're going to want to pull the little core support, bumper support out. This little plastic air deflector is coming out. Washer bottle is also coming out. We're gonna get all those off and move to the next step. When you, let's see if I can get this here. When you pop this center section off, I just crack it and bring it down. You'll notice it's connected by this wire. What we're gonna do is unclip it, get the wire off, and then we're just gonna zip tie it up. It's an ambient air temperature sensor, not a critical component to be right where it was, just needs to be in front of the car. Next up, we need to put the center section on. But in order to do that, you need to do a couple of things first. One, you need to bolt your winch into the center section. If you're not running a winch, then you're, you're good to go. But first you want the winch. The second thing is you need to cut this portion of the front, well, I'm sure there's a name for it, but we're gonna cut it right here. And here on the other side, do not hit the radiators, it'll ruin your day. We're gonna get that cut out of the way, the winch installed. If you're doing a proud rhino bumper, you need to do the same thing. You need to get the winch in, you need to cut this, except for you're just dealing with a much larger bumper that you're gonna be bolting on. I'll get to work. Okay, the upper radiator support shroud thingy is now cleared. It's out of the way. I'm moving on to the winch, get that installed, and then we're gonna bolt it up. Things are moving right along. Okay, with your winch of choice installed, the next thing to do is get it in place. You've got a stand to hold it. It's gonna be your best friend, or you're gonna need a couple of your good friends to kind of balance it there. I've started the two outside bolts to keep this in place. We're gonna go on the other side. I'm gonna show you how to sneak in the valve block. Our Proud Rhino bumper and our CFE bumper have a safety area to protect the front valve block, which is a very critical component on the front of these trucks. So I'll bring the camera in, I'll show you how I do that, and we'll keep going. Okay, you'll see the lines are moved out of the way. I put a bolt back in to, to hold up the winch. And boom, Whoa, that's trippy. All right, there you go. And the bracket is installed and it's protected from all the elements. Time to get the rest of these bolts. Now that that's in place, go ahead and put all of the bolts in. You'll, depending on how you cut this piece here, I leave a little bit. You're going to want to make sure that the top of this winch is resting on the upper radiator support core thingamabob. So we're going to have that kind of sit there. I'm going to use my cart to get it in place. I'm going to get all the bolts in and I'm going to tighten them up. Hyperspeed. Okay, a couple of things I want to address. If you're using the Proud Rhino bumper and you're balancing that whole thing up here, it, it's difficult, right? 
There is a hole in the front for the swivel recovery points. That's how I get that lower bolt that's on the opposite side of this on either side. And it's a real pain over there where we protect the uh, front valve block. So I go through the front hole with a long extension and a swivel to get in there and tighten it down. That's what I found to be the best. If you find something even easier, well, let me know. And now onto this. The washer bottle on the LR4 is a difficult thing. We're gonna to have to remove it and use a different washer bottle in its place. On the LR3, we have a solution for you. You can reuse your factory washer bottle and just relocate it. It's a little different kit. You should probably put that kit here in the notes. I'm gonna get the washer bottle out and move on to the wings. Okay, time to do a recap. We've got the winch installed, tightened down 100%, zip tied wires out of the way so they're not gonna chafe on anything, you know, like the radiator or the frame. So we've got that done. We've got the winch center section bolted firmly to the frame. All eight bolts are in and tight. Now we're moving our way onto the wing. The wing is held on with four bolts, sorry, three bolts, two up top and one on the bottom. You can see the three holes in there. Boom, like so. If you have a friend, this is gonna be another good time for them to be over. I'm gonna do this in struggle form. So you can enjoy your beer and laugh at me while I struggle, but it can be done with one person, but you're not gonna be happy. All right, I'll get to work. You get to laughing. All right, we are getting really, really close to being done. At this point, we wanna trim the inner fender liner where it needs to be. We're gonna also put the fender flare back on, trim that, put all the headlights and grill back in, wire the winch. Fair lead and hook need to go on. The lights will go in if you're running aftermarket lights. In a different video, I'll show you how to install and wire these up because they'll work across all of our, uh, basically our whole bumper family can run these Baja squadron lights that we put in there. On this particular build, I'm gonna do a Factor 55 Ultra Hook and a Factor 55 Fairlead instead of the Terra Firma one. Really, really getting close. Couple of key things I'm gonna point out is how to trim the fender flare, but essentially from that, we're, we're almost done. I know, stop talking, more work, I'll get to it. We are now at the fender flare trimming portion. I like to align the flare, get it in the general idea or general area where it's going. Align, there's a pin right here, I get that in. So I know that this portion's right. Then I come over here and I give it a generous mark. Like, all right, I'm gonna cut it from here to here. I can't do this with one hand. Please don't fall. Let me get some tape. All right. Now I got it in that area. I just take my blue tape. I get a rough estimate of where it needs to be trimmed. As you can see, I'm favoring it to be long. I'd rather have it longer and then I can trim it into place. So I'm gonna cut this off and then I'm gonna keep trimming it as I go 
to get it to lay in here perfectly. Probably gonna take me three or four cuts. If you know a better way, hit me up, but uh, that's how I do it. Trim, cut, trim, cut, cut, trim, trim. Get it all in there nice and perfect. I'll get to work. Like I said, three or four cuts and you get pretty close. It's almost there, just ignore this inner liner. I've got to come down about a quarter of an inch. Now note that this cut is on this angle, this cut is on that angle, and this cut is on that angle. So at this point, I like to go real slow, just trim it up, trying to get it about perfect. If you don't, just a little bit of uh, rubber door trim will fill in any uh, mistakes that you have. So I'll keep going, but remember, whoop, you stay there. Nobody told you to leave. They're all at different angles. This is at an angle, that's at an angle, and then up here. So you gotta cut them a little bit different. You can't just go straight across. With everything cut into place and looking at my watch, that took me 30 minutes to trim it, keep playing with it and fiddling to have the fender flare sit the way I want. I like a tiny little gap in there because if you do use the winch or impact something, it's gonna rotate a little bit. So have a tiny little bit of gap. I'm going to snap the fender flare in place, put the clips in to hold the inner fender well in and I had to take the car outside, so I put the headlights back in it, but I'm gonna pop the headlight out and don't forget this part. You wanna put that little screw in here. If you don't, what'll happen is the fender flare will catch a little bit of wind and rip itself right off the side of the truck. I know a guy that's done that a couple of times, so don't forget to put that screw in. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna snap it all in place. I'm almost done. Put this up, trim the bottom even. Away we go. Time to cut the inner fender liner. I, I just use a razor knife, a pocket knife, and cut it like right across like this, come over to the end and drop it down. Not much to it. You can always just start lower and work your way up to where you need it to be. But I use this ridge on the bumper as my starting point. Shouldn't have to say this, but be mindful of what you're cutting on the other side. There's electronics, there's all kinds of goodies, so watch out for that stuff. Then I'll just get the Dremel or the Whizzy Wheel. We'll clean this up a little bit. Last thing to do is put on the A-bar and the job is done. You'll see the two studs on the bottom, they go through the holes in the wings, set it up there. You can reach up from the bottom and tighten them up. We are almost done. And there you have it, job done. In another video, I'll show you how to do fog lights if you're gonna use our Baja designs. And I'm also going to do a video on how to install the lower bash plate and skid plate. But for now, I'm going home. I'll see you guys on the next one.